Okay, welcome to the Wisdom. This is a laboratory for working with this macro scale software. This is, it's useful for the macro simulation. So this is the first tutorial and we want to cover the creation and resolution of the network objects and it will go further to creating demand matrices. Somehow maybe you need some background that uh, you learn it in the class, for example, about the matrices. So in that case, we make a decision what we can cover more. Let's uh, see what we have for this tutorial. The one thing uh, this, that we want to consider here is this uh, Montreal Island. So you can see two photos here on the left side. It's for the metro network of the Montreal. And uh, on the right side, you can see some part, the partial uh, of the roadways of the Montreal, Montreal Island. And uh, we are going to explain this situation, how you can import maps into the Vizoom and how you can you analyze or do changes. For the first region, when we focus on the private transport and public transport to just explain the concept behind of them. Then we are going to create the network and assign the travel demands to the networks. Okay. As a part of the planning task in private traffic, that's gonna included for example the passenger cars pedestrian bikes all of them can be included in that part uh, that we call it private traffic mm, we can for, use for forecast resulting of the traffic volume and their impacts we can also consider the impact of the road tolls if you have it in the larger scale not in very details segment for example you can just put a toll I just explained it as a general, that what you can do in the private traffic. You can do the intersection capacity analysis or separate analysis of different transport systems that do, for example, HGV that heavy vehicles that you have or car or bike. Determination of the noise and pollution emission is really common result of the micro simulations because as you know, the macro simulations works based on the fundamental Theory of the flow, traffic flow, that's a Q equal to car B, that's a density multiplied by the speed. So uh, this kind of uh, noise and pollution rely on travel time. And the macro scale models works based on the travel time. So that the, you have volumes, you distribute volumes, and then you can see how much travel time you have. So, and, as a result of travel time, you can link it with the noise or pollution on any segment of the roads, on any zone that you have in the city. Okay, so kind of the project that you can define is um, something related to the noise or pollution, because it's really a straightforward, it's really easy to consider it in the Vizum, Vizum and uh, you can suggest it to any others. But uh, for the public transport, uh, we have more option in macro scale because we can do the planning and analysis of the line networks that is going to be a bus or tramway or metro. Uh, design analysis of uh, timetables related to the bus or other public transports. Estimation of the driver and vehicle requirements, cost benefit analysis. And for the ticket issue, because we consider the cost or so you can uh, consider the ticket also and the number of the passengers and boarding lighting uh, lighting it's connection that it has with the um, any bus vehicle that you have in the network so uh, it's possible that you detect all of them you consider them in your model in somehow it's a little bit little bit complicated but uh, mm, it's really useful and straightforward at the, at the result that you have you have a good uh, graphical illustration for the warrant that you have and also you can do the forecast 
or line costing based on the analysis that you can do with Vizum. This is a wrapping up of the issues that you can consider in Vizum. If we go to the network editor of the Vizum, you can, uh, if you open the file 100, for example, that is available on the Moodle, so you can see that the network editor uh, includes some parts like zones and nodes and links. These are the line, the blue lines that you see here are the boundaries of the zones. So you, as a result of each zone, you have some centroid uh, that is located maybe in the center or not, not necessarily at the center, but this is the center of the mass of the population and the trips that you have here for this zone. So that's a, point that you use it for the centroid of the zone and uh, all these networks was created or maybe imported from the other software for example from the GIS map but these are the zone and inside the zone that you have some connections here that you can see them in the orange color but typically they are also in the blue color you can change the graphically the visualization of them but uh, we call it as a link for example this is the link that you have and the, each link has ending to the nodes. So each station here on this metro line is, has a node and the link between them that connect them is a way for transport, for transit between these two nodes. Um, the model is really simple, just it's a huge model and we want to consider it, it, it will be too much uh, big data that you have. Uh, here is a kind of the visualization that you see for the lines. Then later in a couple of weeks, we go through that, that you can have same results here with these values in the orange color. Then it's going to be represent, for example, the, uh, anything that you consider, for example, the capacity or the volume on the line. Okay, we can also insert networks. Uh, to the Vizum, and uh, for that one, uh, you can use the OpenStreetMap or background map. Uh, let me to open the Vizum and explain it on the, in the Vizum file uh, for you. Open the Vizum file 100, uh, and uh, I do the same here. When you open the file, at the bottom, you, you can see that this is a network editor. And if you cl click on the network editor, you can see the network that you have. This is the simple network that you have in the file. And for the reason that you want to, for example, modify or uh, any part of the network, mm, you have an option here as a kind of, you can see that this is a mouse pointer uh, and it's on edit mode. As long as this is on edit mode, you can modify the network that you have. And if you want to create the new part of the network, you have to use this insert mode. So that's the benefit of uh, using these options on the top. On the left side, you have the network bar here. Uh, that's, uh, for example, if you want to work on nodes, to create a new node or modified nodes, so you have to activate nodes. And if you, for example, links, you have to click on links and sector for all of them. One by one, we go through that. And, okay, now, uh, in this condition, we have the same network on this file, and we refer to this one. Um, it's the easiest way that to do that when you have the network, but not always is prepared. Like, for example, if you need some zone here, so you have to create it by, by own, by clicking on the zone and check, uh, insert mode and create the zone. I will show you later. But let's go to have another type of the, um, what can I say, um, for example, network that we have, like, like the road network that we had in the slides. And I want to show you like this one. At the bottom that you can see is a, a network that I extracted from the uh, OpenStreetMap. So if you go to the openstreetmap.org, you can export any part of the network that you are looking for. Uh, I think less than 50,000 nodes, but anyway, uh, you can extract this area uh, as an example. 
and it includes all threads, all links that we have, and also nodes uh, as a kind of the intersection junction that we have here. But uh, in the Vizum, and you save the file, and then in the Vizum, you have to load it. So in the Vizum, you go to the file and import. Here you can see that you have the shape file, you have to open a street map. If you click on the shape file, you can insert the shape file that you have. It's gonna be any type of the shape file in the network, like for example, any roadways, you can insert it here. Uh, but uh, using up the open street map is easier in somehow because it's ready, but uh, limited in somehow. So if you click on the open street map, it's looking for the OSM files the adjustment available in the slides, but here you have to click on three dot and load the file of the open street map 102 open street map dot OSM file that you have in your archive of the file. So you click on that one, load it. And then let's see what else that we had. And to check mark this one. I have read OpenStreet data licensing terms and accept these. Okay, check mark this one and then click okay. Now it's importing the road network that you have and it's a kind of the new shape that you have here. It opened that one, so I go back to the network editor and now I see the links that I have in the OpenStreet. It includes some part of uh, public transport also, as you can see, because we selected them. And later we can connect them together. But uh, this is the end of the blue line on the east side, I think. And this is the green line of the metro station and Montreal. So uh, these are the streets that you have here. And if you zoom in, you can see the links that, is av that are available here with the details that uh, you are looking for. Okay. We don't have any background here. You can see that this is a plane area, but here is the option enable disabled background map. And if you click on the arrow beside of that one, you can see that this is, there are different options that is available like open street map or Bing map. If you click on the Bing map, you can see the, the format of the Bing map as the train area. And you have to click here also to activate it. This is, uh, is the Bing map, but me somehow is not useful for us. So it's better to select the open street map. And it's exactly fit with the real street map that you use to export it actually. Okay. Uh, we try to also open an, another files. Let's see what we have in the slides. And this is the background map, and this is the open street that we were looking for. And if you are looking for the shape file, you have you need to have the SHX file. And then uh, let's uh, for the nodes go there. And I, I want to explain the zones, but uh, let's go for the nodes. Okay, here um, we want to consider the nodes in the file that you open, and then you load. Uh, another street map and you have different type of the nodes that you can see here as an example for example type of the motorway the crossing without traffic light crossing with traffic lights all available in the wisdom to adjust it but you have to click on one nose and you can see this visualization here uh, okay so, um, okay if you i zoom in here you can see that there are links and nodes. And the label of the nodes are available here, for example, node number 73 here. But you can click on the nodes and then you can see all nodes. If you click on links, you can see all links when you move your mouse above them. So if we are on the nodes and you have a network here, for example, like here, there is a network. I just double click on this one and you can see the shape here. This is the shape of the direction of the movement that you have at this point, at this node. 
or some explanation here in the table that belongs to this node as a location, for example, there are some kind of the time for free flow speed and the capacity of the node in that way. Some additional information are available. You can adjust, assign a name to that one, whatever it is. But um, if you want to see it in the geometry form, so on the left side, you can click on the geometry and you can see the geometry form of the node. Maybe it's good for the presentation if you want to present this node, for example. Apart from that, if you go back to the nodes and you have some ending here, if you click on this ending, you can see that uh, the type of the movement will be changed over there based on the direction that you want to move to the up or down. But uh, it's extra than what we want to do here. So let's close the junction editor that is open because we click on the node and go back to the network editor. Now select a link, for example, and see what's happened for the link. If I double click on this link, there's the information belongs to this link, the kind of the type of the link that you want to select. For example, this is a 70 residential link, but if I click on this one, as you can see, the visualization is different graphically. So you can see that the type of this one is the primary one link. It's up to you. Maybe you want to change it this time to the motorway. You can select the motorway, one lane, and the visualization will be different from what you perspect over there. Uh, under the link, you can define the type of the transport system that use this link, like a bus, car, HEV that is here. So you can select it from the list uh, what type of the transport can use it. Because, for example, if it's a travel lane, so you can select it as a um, light rail, for example, tram, sorry, tram, instead of these options. Or maybe this is the only bicycle lane, so that you can select only bike. In general, we have bus, car, HEV for most of the roadways that we have in the city. Um, and uh, uh, at the bottom, you can see that apart from the basis that is defined based on the speed of the link, that is 100, for example, uh, this is the benefit that you insert the open street map here because they are included in that one. Uh, the PRT transit system is the same thing that the, about the transport system that you selected on the top. Uh, so you can now adjust the uh, specification related to them. For example, the speed that they can have, uh, HEV 60, car 70. Okay, and then you see that they are different here and uh, uh, also different options that you may have, for example, bull volume or other things, impedances uh, is related to the shape of the roads that you have. But uh, um, you can adjust it based on the model that you want to develop later. Public transport system, if you have public transport system like BOSS, uh, it has some specification related to that one, you can insert it. I will go through that later. For example, the cost of passing this link or uh, if there is a cross section or volume, you can insert it here. The congestion is another option. These are the extra that we are going to uh, later, but these are the attributes that you can use for the links that you have here. And this is the user defined attributes that these are kind of the attributes that inserted from OpenStreetMap. Uh, you can also have your own attribute Mm, so, for example, the maximum speed is 50 here that mentioned. So it's a um, way that uh, maybe you want to adjust it and change it. So you can do that. Mm, and time varying, uh, that is for another reason that we go later. So this is for the uh, links. And let's back to presentation to see what time. Okay, about the control type of the nodes that we mentioned, um, you can select, for example, this is the type that it has. Uh, typically it's assigned through the open street map, but if in somehow that you, there is a problem or you want to change it, you can change that function of the control of type of the node and through here by this menu and uh, whatever you want. It's kind of a roundabout or maybe a, always stop that is really common in Montreal. 
And then this is the links that I explained, the type of the links. Um, and we are looking for creating a new link here between these two ends and from here to this end. So I go back to the file and try to create this link. And you can remember the point that you have and follow it with me to create a new link. And because it's an example, so I want to create the motorway. However, it's not the location that we have the motorway as a connection that they have, but we can do it as an example. So uh, for links that you want to create, you, uh, as you remember, you need nodes if you want to connect links together. So it's better that you create a node here. So click on the nodes and then go to the insert mode and create another more node here. So you have a node here. I hope that there is a node here, but if it's not, uh, I click it, but I think we have it here. And there is a node here, okay? So um, go back, uh, go back to the link, and now create the link between this node. You click on that one, and when you are close to the next node, uh, it will be visible the name of the node or the label of the node, and then you click. Then when you click that one, so you have both end and the link, and you have to choose the type of the link that you are looking for, and if you selected, for example, 10 motorway one lane, it's gonna be like this one. So it's the time to uh, click OK, but uh, you need to consider also the opposite direction. So for the opposite direction, you can close the opposite direction, but check mark this one, or as a default, it can be the same that you created for 10 lane one lane motorway, so it's gonna be the same for the opposite, or you maybe change it from the list so it's up to you and very flexible so simply you create part of the link here and then you want to create another one from this one to so for creating a link you want to continue this link from this point to connect it directly to this junction apart from what whatever you have here but click here and then the same thing same direction uh, opposite direction one lane motorway, click OK, and you have the link, the connection of this link to this junction, from this junction to this junction. Let's, okay. The specification that we assign here as a default is based on the car and HGB. So it's up to you that maybe you want to remove the HGB just by clicking on this button of transport system, as I showed you before, or you can modify, for example, uh, free flow speed here or the other speeds that belongs to the system, the transport system, uh, private transport or the public transport under these tabs. There are part of the adjusting graphic parameters that you can have uh, very, very flexible in the VZoom and uh, you can change the sequence of the visualization and also for the layers that you have actually. And you can also modify the form of the display that they have. So in Visum, uh, for example, on links, if you actually click here, if I just left click on this one, uh, all links will be removed from visualization. And you can see that it's not activated anymore. If I click on that one again back, but it's a toggle key, but if I right click on that, and you can see the window of the edit graphic parameters. It's also available on the top here in this bottom. But uh, these are the variety of, for example, the motor, motorway that you can see here uh, has the edge of the red line and all other specification that it has can be adjusted graphically here. And uh, you can see on the left, column that uh, is not limited only for links and uh, you can also adjust uh, visualization of the nodes or turns and zones and etc. These are really useful and each of them have the active mode that you can see here or the passive mode that uh, for example the kind of is under the construction and um, is the plan area so it's going to be a dashed line like this one or 
the mark one that about the directional shows and these are really useful at this part okay and the turns okay and any nodes that you have so you need to consider the type of the turns that you have on that node um, for the direction of that one for the specification of the turning that you have over there so you, ha you have to go back again to the junction editor but now you work on turns so here you can see for example on this node I have to go to the nodes and then click on this node okay and instead of geometry I can go to the turns and when I go to the turns you can see that I can adjust the turns typically you have the nine type of the turns here you click here you can see them okay and like this one you can see I, I just activate them to visualize one by one that's for better understanding that where is the turns that we have and for example if I click on this one then this kind of the German language that you can see here as a help but uh, you know, it's a kind of the selection of this turn when I click you have three turns here uh, that not necessarily turning maybe it's gonna be a straight movement like this one let's see this one is the straight movement if i click on this one so i select this one and it will be highlighted at the bottom for the specification that you have for that term and you can adjust the transport system that is the transit system that is really important part for any turn that uh, you can see here i click on the transport system and i can select okay it's just limited for bicycle for example it's just limited for cars so uh, in the urban area is really useful to use these kind of terms. And for the turn types that I show you here, you had a turn type here, type number. You can see there are different type of type number that you have here, but the turn types shows that type of the turning that you have. For example, the right turn is number one straight head two, left turn three, U turn four. And five to nine is a free for user defined cases that whatever you want, you can assign it. And this is for the right of way uh, in the report that you have. The table of that is, I extracted this one from the Bizum manual, but uh, this is the table for turn standards and you can find it there for a specification of any turns and for the, um, type of the major flow or minor flow that uh, belongs to main road or the smaller roads that in the connections that you have. So you can follow these symbols in the report to identify what's there. Then we have to go for the zones. For this reason, you, you can open the file 103 uh, vzone and then, uh, or maybe, one which is okay that we continue with this one but um, no continue with this one that you have is okay and you can import the shape file of the centroid of the zone as you remember here in the vision file there is no zones here you can just links and nodes and how i can identify that there is no zones you can go to the zone and right click on the zone this option is available for all of them and then go for the list and you click on the list you can see the list of all zones that you have and it's empty here but if i click on for example links and go to the list of the links you can see many links that we have here due to the insert of the street map that we did so for the zones we have to insert it and uh, I provided the zones in a, in a shape file that you can insert it. So you can go to the import under the file menu. You can go to the import and select the shape file. And then go for the zones. Okay. 
uh, the file number 104, Visum Zone Centroid, Zone Centroid, and this is the shape file that you are looking for. So I click on that one and insert it. And I face on arrow. Uh, again, you can go to the import and file import shape file, and now select the zone file that we uploaded the correct file. Now it has some volume also, and then open it. So when you open the file, it asks you that what type of the shape file is about the objects and features that you have in the shape file. Vision wants to know that how can this software read that file. And the objects that you have over there, here we want to select the zone that recognized as a zone here. Okay, so we consider it as a zone and then click OK. Mm, I don't know why it lost. One, one, one thousand, for example. Mm, okay. Okay. It has for the saving, so I save that one. And now these are the zones that are visible uh, that included in the file that you have, and then we include the centroid. You can use these zones uh, for analyzers and assigning volumes, for example, uh, for trips actually between the zones. But the area that we selected here, if you zoom in, you can see that it doesn't have any zone. And the reason that we selected this area is to create a new zone for this one. And for this purpose, you need to click on the zone and click on the insert mode. Now you want to create the boundary for that one. For example, the boundary can be bet between nodes that you have here. So here, for example, you can create it from this point. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, not this point. Let's get it. No, it was my mistake. Have to move it. Okay, first you have to. Um, show where is the centroid of the zone that you are looking. This is the zone that we want to consider this area as a zone, the new zone, but uh, we have to know where is the dense part of the population for you know, trip generation or attraction inside this zone. Typically here is a kind of the park, so we have to shift it to the left side as much as possible, like here is approximate of the zone that you're looking for, or here, for example, to just click here and this is the center of the zone. Then you have to start for uh, drawing the boundary of the zone and it should be counterclockwise. For this reason, I start, there are many nodes available here that you can select, but I select one of them, for example, at this point and start to go to the next point and continue to just draw a zone, doesn't matter what's happened there i can have an overlap also it's not a big issue uh, but you can see the arrow uh, and it shows the direction to the center of the zone that you assign so the first point that you click is the center of the zone that you have here 407 and the rest of them are boundaries and then i end it here now i have a zone here this is the new zone Let's go to the edit mode. And this is the center of the new zone that I created here. When you create the center of the zone and also the zone boundaries, now you have to link the zone to the nearest intersection or uh, the connection that it has. For example, you can say, okay, this is the center of the zone, but uh, we have a high rise building here. For example, we have one high rise building here as an example. And here also, I think it looks like the hospital or something like that. Uh, so um, this center of the zone, you connect it by the connectors to the most populated area that you have. Let's click on the connector on the left side and then go back here. You, you want to create the connectors. So we'll go to the insert mode, we're creating. And then click on this center of the zone and uh, the next one that I want, I added here, for example, at this part, at this junction. Okay, so I know that this is the junction that 
I have here that, uh, um, for example, the mass population are here, and uh, I want to connect this population with the center of the zone because there is a gap between them. And in reality, this is the part of the traffic jam, for example, or having too much tree here. So not here. So that's the reason I just connect them by this connector. Same for the others. For example, if I have a building here, for example, I can do that. Again, just connect them. Or um, it's a kind of the distributing uh, to this part. It's uh, attraction because from the zone, I just connect to a point. It's also possible, for example, if this is the residential building, so I can connect this one with this. But uh, let's sh to show you all the, okay, in the visualization is not really visible clearly, but uh, for example, I connected with three connectors and you can see here, this is the center of the zone with this, uh, that I connected by these three connectors to the three junctions here to represent the situation that you have uh, for the mass, a mass population at that point that maybe create or absorb trees to that point. So because in the larger scale, we zoom recognize only the, cent the zone center, this center of the zones, okay? But uh, maybe, okay. Uh, the center of the zones, this is 407. And all trees between zones will be based on this center. And then from here, it should be distributed to the end of the connector that you define. So in, in, the, in this case, we can call it as a sub zone if you want to consider it. That's kind of the connectors that you have. Okay, and you saw that we defined the connectors uh, between the areas that you had and also uh, based on the zones that you created. The zones that you create, this is the new zone model that you have. So you can save as the zones uh, in the network and then later use it uh, in your file. So you can save as uh, and through the network menu and consider it as zone.net. Uh, I show you. You have a save as here on the file, you see, and go to the file and save as, and then go to the network. And here you can give a name here, for example, 105 test, whatever it is, and call it as a zones. And the password should be .NET, and later you can open it when you want as a zones that you created. And also not only the zone that you created, it also include all other zones that you have. This is saves. When you want to save it, it asks you to what you want to include, and let's have everything that you have as much as you want, and then press OK, and now it has been saved. Okay. The part of the Forsage classical model is another issue that we have to consider it uh, for, for our network. As you know that we have the trip generation, distribution, mode choice, and route assignment for all kind of the trip that you have. As a generation, that is a kind of the production and attraction, attraction that you have. Maybe it's a mall and you have attraction there, or maybe it's a residential building, you have some production over there. And in the evening, in the morning, it's like that one, uh, kind of trip generation, but uh, in the evening, it's gonna be again trip generation, but in the reverse position. For example, in the morning, it was uh, the residential building is the production of the trip, but in the evening, because you return to your home, uh, it's attraction that you attract to that zone. So the time is really important in case that you have it in your macros uh, macroscopic model. The trip distribution uh, is based on the journey time or phase that you have to consider. It's a choice that you 
and that gives to you for the distribution of the trip and the scheme data that we are going to update it but uh, based on for example which one, which one is faster for example um, and then select the mode choice um, for the demand that you have to for example you want to use your bicycle you want to use your car or public transport this is the more choice and really important in the selection of the more choice uh, in transport systems then there is the road assignment that means for example you select a bike for your mode of transport but uh, which route you select to go through that one which kind of the route that you want to select it and uh, this is the reason behind of the route assignment you can see again that the explanation that I show you uh, and uh, the approach that we have in Vizoom is based on the work, school, high school, home or others that you can specify it. But the, the creation of the trip generation um, is based on the purpose person group. That what kind of the, what's the purpose of this trip and uh, what's the group of the people that wants to try, uh, actually do this trip this is the most macro scale concept behind of that one then you need to, to consider the transport demand model so as you know that if you have private transport demand this will be called passenger vehicle for example and put is the public transport that is based on the passengers so the first one, the problem, private transport is based on the vehicle that you have. And the second one is based on the passenger inside the vehicle that you moved between some stations, stops or whatever. As a result, we have the travel demand that contains the trips that depart within the time interval. As I said, the time interval is really important that it can be changed in the whole scenario that you have. So it refers to the transport system, partial transport system, or person group, or the purpose of the trip. But whatever it is, it will be defined and linked to the demand segment. And describe, it describe a group of the road users, it's a group of the road users, with homogeneous travel behavior. So mm, from A to B, that some group of people wants to go by the same behavior, but uh, uh, this is a demand, but they can have a different mode of choice. The demand matrix that we created is uh, also linked to the demand segment of them. For example, if it, some guy wants, a group of people wants to come from the Butcherville to the Montreal Island, to one zone of them. So they have to consider, be considered as a demand segment and under the same demand matrix based on the time interval that they want to use it. Uh, and but what kind of the transport system that they use we don't know and it's, it's up to them and we, we have to identify based on the surveying that we do that uh, and there to identify for example people use what kind of transport or maybe do the data collection on the sites for example on arterial roads for example la fontaine tunnel is a good uh, uh, part of the road that can data can be collected over there to identify if they use the passenger car or maybe bus or even they use the train that comes from the Butcherville to the Montreal if there is a train over there I'm not sure so as a result in the concept of the Vizum you can see that the transport systems that you have on the top whatever they select doesn't matter it goes to the mode okay if this is the transport system is based on the heavy vehicle as a truck so the truck cannot be useful uh, use other mode of the transport so it should be uh, under the mode of the transport of hgv and then continue the same thing but for example for the uh, people with the private transport that they want to use private transport so they can select the car and then go for the car private or car of the business of the car sharing that it has and then consider it as a matrix of the demand matrix in the separate form and this is the demand segment part here in the third level or for example uh, they want to use the bus or tram they can also use the park ride the bus tram and it's kind of the park ride is a mix of all of them so you can see that you can have different transport system but 
they want to use the mode of the car bus tram it's a kind of combination of the mode of the transport and later we can go uh, and define them under the demand segment of the pnr or park and ride and the corresponding matrix to that one but for example if you want to use the bus and tram and without car so you can skip the uh, all things about the private transport and only consider the public transport and the public transport of the other students uh, that we can class separate them if we want otherwise you can consider them together but typically we because the demands of them are different for the adults and the students uh, so we separate them in the demand segment the population that we have and all these information are available in data collection points You go to the demand segment and insert travel demand and new demand segment here by going to the network uh, menu and go to the transit system mode and transit segment. Uh, and the tab demand segment can show you this window. Let's uh, I'll show you over there. Okay, go to the network menu on the top and you can see that this is a kind of the transport system mode demand segment, you can select it. And in the new window that is, appear, uh, that is appear here, you have a tab of the demand segment. It, these are the transport systems that you have, all of them here. And you can see the types and modes. Um, it's really clear that's the kind of the abbreviation that you have, for example, for the pedestrians, you have PET, it's, it's nothing. Also, you have the different modes that you create and that has been created and you can create the new modes if you want. But typically we create the demand segment instead of mode. But creating a demand segment, you can create, use this button to create a new demand segment or maybe you can modify this one. Just let me, I select a car and click on the edit to show you what you have here. Even you, if you want to create, you have to adjust what these parameters here. And what it's called is a code uh, that you can assign it whatever you want. There's a name, I think, special. The mode, you can select the mode of the track uh, demand. It is important that which kind of the mode of the demand that they want to select. So you have to select it here. The occupancy rate is one as long as this is a private and if, for example, this is a public that you can change it or maybe if this is the car sharing, uh, it's another issue that you can adjust it here. And uh, this is the analyze period and the horizon that you can adjust here. So whenever you adjust them, you can create a new one or adjust them and then uh, continue with that one. It's up to you that you want to add another one or not. So if you have, for example, new mode here, new mode of traffic like the Uber, it is not in, inside this one. So you can create that one here and then assign the demand segment to that one if you have a data for that and then click OK. Then you need to insert the demand matrix. So I think in this file we don't have the matrix, but uh, you have the saved matrix in your folder that you can insert it. And for this reason, you can see that uh, if you Follow these steps and you can select that and demand matches so you can uh, adjust it and then you can finalize it. Uh, let's uh, go to the file and show you over there. Here you can see that this is the network window here and here you have a tab at the bottom that's called matrices. If you click on matrices you can see that's empty, it should be empty if you select the empty file here. But uh, here is the button for creating matrix to create the new matrix and it can give you this window. For the demand matrices, you need to uh, modify it like this one based on the matrix type as a demand matrices. This is the, it's a prerequisite for all models that you have that you need to have the demand matrices and it's mostly available based on the surveys or data collection. And uh, you can give a name and a number to this matrix that can be visible later. And matrix with zone dimensions and data matrix. Uh, we don't have any formula for that one now. 
and uh, that's all you just click OK and this is the empty matrices that created based on the zones you can see that this is the zones these are the zones that we have on both directions and uh, you can modify these matrices if you know them you can modify it manually but it's, I never suggested nobody suggested because there's an option here that you can uh, you, you see the new matrix that you have here on the left side and you can click on that one right click on that and then open from file and if you click on the open from file you have access here to a uh, matrix OD final MTX extension so select the OD final and open it and you can see that the data in the matrix will be updated. You have one more zone here, 407, that is zero. And the reason is that you created this one as a new zone. So in the previous data that you had, maybe you didn't have any information here, but you can uh, use the same data, for example, for this one, or as an example that you want to work, or maybe if you have the information that in the OD matrices of the cities, uh, so you can, update them based on that information and use it. Okay, now you need to link the, this demand message to the demand segment that you have. And then for this reason, let's uh, go to the slides to show you. Okay, this is the matches, for example, that you had. Now you, you have to define it based on the demand segment. If you remember that you had a demand segment order, and it's accessible this window through the demand and demand data then you can modify the demand uh, for the uh, demand segment that you are looking for here for example if you want to assign it to the car so let's go back to the model and here under the demand menu go for the demand date uh, demand segment demand segment this one the first one okay and then under the demand, oh, no, not this one. Demand data, yes, for the demand data. And then under the demand segment, you have variety of the demand segment codes and one of them is C or maybe another one that you created. So you just need to uh, modify the matrix that you have here and just click on this matrix and select matches directly so I mean, this is the formulation that you have but you can use the select matrix directly because this is a demand matrix uh, and select the matrix that you created as a demand matrix and then click ok now you can see that the matrix assigned to this one and this is the name of the matrix and this is the start time for using that matrix if you want to consider it for different time intervals. And then click OK. So this is the assigning of the demand matrix. And then uh, we have to go for analyzes that will be um, accomplished in the next season. I think it's better to go through that one.